webinar. Uh, you can visit the NRRA webpage if you Google it, it should pop up for you. We have a conference coming up in May from the 21st through the 23rd. Our registration is open on the webpage. And for today's research pays off, we have Dr. Fang Hong. Fang is the pavement engineer at Texas DOT. He earned his PhD from the University of Texas in 2007. He's been working at TxDOT since then. His work mainly includes pavement system management, pavement forensic studies, testing, and evaluation. Before coming to the United States, Fang received his BS and MS degrees in transportation engineering from Southeast University, China. Uh, his presentation grinding performance in Texas. So please welcome Dr. Fang Hong. Thank you, Jared. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, before we start this presentation, I would, I would also like to, you know, um, include one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Andrew Smith, uh, in my presentation. Uh, just a brief introduction about Dr. Smith. He was a senior research and a researcher at the University of Texas. Uh, then he was involved with the diamond grinding, and recently he joined us. So I invite him to, you know, be uh, also the speaker of this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I will include the following parts. First, I will give a brief introduction about the background of the study. Then, I will go to some details of the performance of the diamond grinding projects in Texas, with focus on four, four projects, uh, Interstate Highway 35, U.S. Highway 287, U.S. Highway 69, and U.S. Highway 96. Then, based on all projects information we have in hand, we run some statistic analysis with folks on the right quality in terms of IRI change due to diamond grinding, and also we investigate the, the skid change due to the diamond grinding. Then last part, I will uh, summarize this uh, uh, discussion. This is a brief instruction. Actually, TechStart is managing about 200,000 lane miles of roads. Um, that, that is the largest, you know, among all the states. And among this uh, 20k, uh, 200,000 lane miles of roads, we have about uh, 40,900 lane miles, which is CRCP, and we also have about 3,400 lane miles, which is JCP. So the total lane miles of CRCP and JCP accounts for around like 8% 8, 8 of the entire network. And uh, we can see some of the concrete pavements have been in service for a long time. You know, we run some uh, study, we can find, you know, some of the con concrete pavements have been there for 40, 50 years. They are still in good shape. Uh, in the meantime, we always have a lot of uh, needs in, in the maintenance and rehabilitation of existing pavements in order to improve the right quality, improve the skid resistance, and other performance, such as the noise, safety, related uh, factors. So today we are going to focus on one of the uh, maintenance uh, techniques, which is about diamond grinding. So as we know, diamond grinding is a concrete pavement restoration technique. It works by removing a very thin layer of the top of a concrete pavement. It was used to improve pavement functionality, such as smoothness and skid resistance. Uh, diamond grinding is not uh, new. It has been used in pavement field for over half a century in the US. However, in the meantime, we always have evolution in the tech, uh, in this uh, uh, technology. You know, such as recently we have the next generation, you know, uh, concrete pavement. In Texas, you know, um, we had uh, over 750,000 square yards area diamond, which was diamond ground 
on uh, in 2012, just one year. So I want to just give a note over here. This study was based on data until 2012. We haven't got a chance to update the the this diamond grinding study in recent years. We we do have a plan to do it. So uh, just bear in, my, bear in mind, this is uh, until 2012 data. This slide shows uh, how the diamond grinding looks like. The first slide shows the it's under operation. Uh, this is a four feet wide strip, which is already uh, ground, uh, ground. And uh, the next to this four feet strip is the, the part which is being uh, ground. This is uh, the machine which is used in the diamond grinding. And the second uh, picture shows the difference between this is the ground, this is the unground area. We can definitely see the difference. You know, this looks newer and it has deeper texture. And the third picture, which is uh, the configuration uh, of the uh, the grinder. You know, we can see this is a kind of a cylinder type of uh, grinder, which is used to uh, grind the uh, concrete pavement surface. The last one, again, it's a broad picture, shows the difference between ground area and the non-ground area. So totally in this project, in this study, we uh, investigated 11 projects across Texas. Uh, here, I would like to focus on four case studies um, ranging from four, uh, for, uh, including four districts, Childress, Fort Worth, and uh, Beaumont. It is noted that not every district, we have 25 districts, not every district have concrete pavements, but we, for some of the districts, they have a, a very long miles of pavements, such as Fort Worth, uh, Houston, um, Beaumont. So in this case study, I will, uh, in the following, I will talk about um, four projects from these uh, three districts. The first one, is a study on Interstate Highway 35. It is located uh, in Fort Worth district. It is a, a continuous reinforced concrete pavement. This project was uh, 8.5 miles long, and uh, diamond grinding was done in 2011 and 2012. Uh, during you know the the design uh, process. Uh, actually, there's different alternatives. You know, there's discussion regarding uh, whether we need to use diamond, ground, diamond grinding or need to have overlay. Then it was decided by district that uh, you know diamond grinding was uh, selected. Um, this pavement actually uh, was relatively in good shape in terms of pavement condition. There's not not much you know punch out, not much distress like you know other distress like uh, cracking, etc. But the skid is a is a, is a big issue, and uh, we have a few analysis index which includes crash accident. This is from Textdot crash report information, Chris, and we also have other index indexes including the skid resistance, noise, and ride quality. This information were obtained from uh, a research project, five uh, which Dr. Smith was deeply involved. Um, we have our own skid truck collect data, and we also have our OBSI equipment to collect uh, the noise data. As well, uh, we have our own um, inertia profiler to collect uh, the right quality in terms of IRI. This uh, slide shows the difference, the you know the impact of the uh, diamond grounding on the performance. The first chart is about the accident. Um, we can see the y-axis is the percent reduction. For the total uh, accident, there's about 14% reduction before and after the diamond grinding. Uh, this is uh, based on monthly accident. And regarding the kind of a severe uh, accident, which is uh, including the fatality and incapacitating uh, injury, this uh, 
reduction of the percentage is about 41 percent. So here we can see there's significant reduction in the accident before and after the diamond grinding. Uh, this is a, a good indicator that, that you know diamond grinding can improve the safety for this piece of pavement. It is noted, you know, this piece of pavement is located in Fordworth area. There's a lot of traffic over there. The second chart, uh, let's look at this skid one. But skid is related to accident. So before and after, actually, the skid number increased. We can see it increased from 21 to 34. There's a 62% increase due to this diamond grinding. And for ride quality, before diamond grounding, the ride quality is about 124. And after the diamond grounding, the ride quality decreased significantly. There's 35 reduction in the uh, uh, in IRI. Uh, last one is noise. Although noise is not uh, the major focus of the of the, you know this diamond grounding project, but here we can see there's uh, still three percent reduction. In the, in the in the noise before and after uh, the diamond grinding. Um, well, as I mentioned, you know, when picking the treatment of this project, uh, there's the alternative, which is uh, ACP overlay. We can see, you know, we can save three million dollars using diamond grinding over if we have overlay on the CRCP. And uh, preventive maintenance treatment on structurally sound pavements is required for this diamond, diamond grounding. So that means, you know, if this uh, CRC is not structurally sound, probably we need a uh, run rehabilitation or overlay or other type of measure instead of diamond grounding. We are suited for urban environments since unlike overlays, it does not increase the height of pavement eliminates bridge clearance and curb and gutter rest rest restrictions. So, you know, like urban areas, we have a lot of, you know, uh, elevation requirement. Uh, we can uh, reduce the thickness of pavement a little bit, but uh, sometimes there's no room to increase, increase the thickness of pavement. So uh, in this case, diamond grinding can be a good choice. Um, it should be noted, you know, it is very important to run QC and QA to ensure there's adequate uh, uh, texture. And also, CRC constructed using limestone aggregates may subject to wear. So depending on the aggregates, this chart shows you know for that particular project, you know with the time going by, time in aging months, the uh, skin number can can decrease. Uh, you know it's dependent on what kind of uh, aggregate is used in the CRC. Okay, um, let's move on to the second case study. This second case study is uh, actually um, located in Childress district, a little bit um, northwest of uh, uh, Fort Worth district. Um, this is a jointed concrete pavement section. Um, this pavement uh, was built in early 1990s, so it has been there like about like 30 some years. And uh, the treatment measure was diamond grounding plus dowel bar retrofit. The reason using dowel bar retrofit was uh, um, the load transferring capacity was not very good. And in order to kind of uh, restore this uh, LTE, the DBR was also used. So we analyzed the right quality uh, information. Basically, you know, we have our pavement man management system, which uh, um, houses over 20 years of data. So we can pull the data from the PMIS and look at the uh, ride quality change for that uh, particular section. This uh, figure shows, you know, the IRI change along the year. So on the left side, we can see before diamond grinding, Actually, uh, the average IRI is pretty high. It's about like a fifth, uh, 150, the average IRI. Then after diamond grinding, which was done in 2004, uh, diamond grinding and 
Tower bar retrofit, we can see the IRI dropped from like about 140 to 68. It's a quite a significant drop. Uh, even after about 80 years of service, of course, that the IRI can, can increase a little bit with time going by, traffic impact, environment impact, etc. Even after 80 years of service, uh, still compared to before the, the treatment, there's 36% of reduction of, of IRI if we compare this point with this point. Um, the third case study is a U.S. Highway 69, which is in East Texas, the Beaumont district, east of Houston. It was a jo also a joint concrete pavement section. This pavement section was built in 1988. Again, both uh, diamond grinding and double bar retrofit DBR was done. It was done in 2001. And we used the same data source, pavement management information system, to study the right quality change along time and also the impact of uh, uh, diamond grinding and DBR on the right quality. Uh, the reason, you know, by the way, the reason we use both diamond grinding and double bar uh, retrofit is that uh, we observed uh, for that piece of pavement, the major distress is the faulting. This is why, you know, we would like to use uh, DBR to recover the uh, LTE as well as diamond grinding to uh, smoothen the pavement. Here we can see um, this is before double bar retrofit and the diamond grinding. The IRI is also pre, was also pretty high, which is uh, 190 inch per mile. And it is also noted, you know, immediately after the, immediately after the double bar retrofit, DBR, the, di the diamond grinding was not done. This is why we see, you know, after one year, also the, when we had the data collected, the IRI even increased from 190 to 210-ish. Then a diamond grinding was done in 2008 and the IRI was reduced 50%. Uh, so this is a, this area shows, you know, the IRI after the double bar retrofit and diamond grinding. We can see even after like four years of service, the pavement uh, uh, ride quality still was very good. So the lesson learned from here is, you know, if we do double bar retrofit, it's better also do diamond grinding to reduce the IRI. The last case study was on US Highway 96. It's uh, also located in Beaumont District. It was a it was a joint concrete pavement section. Uh, this section was built in 1998, uh, 30 years old. And uh, the only the diamond, diamond grinding was used on this section. And uh, we also look at the right quality change along the time. This is uh, before diamond grinding, we can see the IRI was uh, kind of 110. And uh, after diamond grinding, the IRI dropped to pretty good shape, around 60-ish. Um, but we can see, you know, after one, two, three, four years, the IRI kind of increased. So the explanation was, you know, uh, the 14 can come back, can come back because uh, there's no DBR used in this pavement. So our recommendation to district was, you know, do both diamond grinding as well as uh, DBR to recover, you know, LTE. So after this uh, four, uh, these are four case studies. Uh, actually, in this study, we total have 11 projects across the state of Texas. And we put all the data together, you know, we collect information regarding location of the pavement, uh, whether DBR was used or not, what's the traffic, you know, in, in, in millions of ESOs, 
and what's ADT, what's trap percent, and uh, the year, which year our, uh, the diamond grounding was applied, and uh, the change in IRI and the change in skid. And we can see statewide, you know, for crossing across this 11 projects, the IRI had about 60 inch per mile reduction, averagely, you know, before and after uh, uh, diamond grinding. And also we can see the average uh, um, noise, uh, average, average, excuse me, the average skid change was, uh, there is a 5.6 increase in the skid number. So based on this data, we run some uh, kind of uh, statistic modeling, regression model to see the uh, effect of different variables on the performance of uh, uh, the pavement in terms of IRI. And we can see this is a model. Basically, we use IRI as a <clears throat> function of age, you know, the before treatment IRI at our bar retrofit and the side factor, etc. So we run regression on this model. We come up with the result. Now we can see, we can focus on this T statistic. We can see all this T statistic. These are uh, statistically significant at 95% confidence level. So for example, let's say age, that means if this, this sign is positive, it means with, with time going by, uh, the IRI will increase. Also, before IRI condition, that means, you know, if uh, the, uh, before the treatment IRI is uh, high, that means the after treatment IRI can be relatively high. And uh, Dao bar retrofit, so this is negative. That means if we use Dao bar retrofit, we can reduce the IRI after the treatment. The other factors are the uh, the side factors, you know, this can include the environmental impact, you know, soil impact, etc. I'm not going to touch upon these details. So overall, this model has an R square of 0.92. That means, you know, the, the, the model fits the data pretty well. This is uh, the trend line. We can see before treatment and after treatment, treatment averagely there's 59 inch per mile reduction in IRI due to the uh, diamond grinding treatment. And uh, then after the treatment, this is a progression of the IRI after treatment. Every year there's 1.7 inch per mile increase after the treatment. It's not a really significant increase after the treatment. Then based on the limited data we, we collected, you know, uh, on the uh, skid number, we can find uh, uh, before and after the diamond grinding treatment, there's about 5.6 averagely struck uh, the uh, skid number increase. So the immediate in uh, impact of skid number increase is uh, we have increase of 5.6 uh, skid number increase. Then after the uh, treatment, we can see skid number can go down, you know, because of rearing by the traffic. And uh, the deterioration rate is about two skid number reduction per year. So compared to I, we didn't have, you know, um, um, more sufficient information for, for this skin number because we didn't collect skin number every year on this network. This is the conclusion, you know, based on the field studies of a sample of concrete pavements across across Texas. Oh, it is suggested that, you know, diamond grinding could be an effective measure to improve, you know, ride quality. We have a 60 inch per mile reduction averagely, you know, because of diamond grinding. It can be also used to improve the skid resistance. It can be also used to improve, you know, vehicle safety because it's related to the skid. And uh, noise can be also reduced due to uh, diamond grinding. So uh, actually this study was conducted, you know, under the joint effort you know, by different divisions here in Austin and the several other districts. I would just uh, give a special acknowledgement to them. With this,
I think uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, I will be uh, uh, more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Feng. Uh, are there any questions? There's no questions online right now. Any in the classroom here? Um, I'd like to know what percent your Dalmar retrofits are done with diamond grinding. Is it all the time, or what per what percent? Um, I uh, I don't know exact number, but uh, I think according to our experience, you know, and lesson lesson learned in this study. Um, if there's 14, most likely district the current practices they would like to use DBR. Yeah, but what percent? Do you have any idea? Um, I don't have an exact idea. Okay. But. Um, what what percentage is your new generation grind versus kind of traditional diamond grinding in Texas? Yeah, this study actually we focused on the conventional diamond grinding. And in last two or three years, I think the Texas started using next generation. Uh, it's coming up, but uh, percentage again, I'm I'm not sure how much percent, but the demo is, is coming up. We are going to uh, run a, you know, we have a plan to to run further study, you know, to look at the next generation. Well, I know, you know, there's a bunch of sections uh, in Houston district because Houston there's a lot of uh, uh, concrete pavement over there. It's coming. Uh, Fang, we have a question online asking about the different textures of diamond grinding you use and what are the differences between them? Between? Do you use different textures of diamond grinding? Okay, can you? Um, I, I'm not uh, really sure. Uh, we're not really involved on the uh, construct, construction side of things. Uh, I, I guess uh, the Diamond grinding that I've been involved with has mostly just been the conventional. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Another question is, um, how did you measure skid? Was that what okay, we 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 have our um, uh, Locked wheel skid truck. We use the locked wheel skid truck to measure skid at text dot. Uh, it's a, a smooth tire. Do you want to add anything? At 50, okay. 50 Yeah, at 50 miles per hour. Um, I'm sure in, in your research project, um, you run some skid <coughs> using the bridge pendulum, right? Yeah, but uh, I think the values that are reported are locked wheel skid. Yes. So uh, this the standard uh, at text dot is we use locked wheel. Yeah. I think that's it for uh, questions online and in the classroom. All thank right. you very much for uh, talking with us today, Fang, and uh, thank you for presenting on this topic. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. And if you have further questions, feel free to send an email to us. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody for the time. Bye. Uh, just a reminder for everybody who's still online that our uh, next research pays off in May will be postponed because we're doing our pavement workshop May 21st through 23rd, and that would overlap with that. Um, the next uh, one after that will be June 18th. We'll be talking with Gerard Musla from uh, American Engineering Testing about 100 year old cement, is that right, Bernard? Concrete. Concrete, I'm sorry. Um, and then in July 16th, um, some folks from DustX will be talking about uh, base stabilization and some work they're doing in Norway. So uh, feel free to join us then and uh, hope to see you guys at the pavement workshop. Thank you. <laughs>